Hello friend, welcome to my engineering hub. This is your narrator, Chief Engineer Ravi Gupta. Today we are going to talk about alpha lubrication. In today's video, we will see that how the alpha lubricator work. After that, I will show you the overalling procedure of an alpha lubricator. Friend, those who are watching this video for the first time, I will tell you, Marine Engineering Hub is a platform which makes video which will be beneficial for examination and for your oral. So please do subscribe and please do share our channel. Friend, those working in your class 1, class 2, class 4, I request you to join our channel so that you can get a lot of like this video which are yet to be released by subscribing the channel membership. So you will find the membership in the link description. So let's start today's video of alpha lubrication. So before understanding alpha lubrication, we should first understand the basic outline of the alpha lubrication. So this is the alpha lubricator which basically look like this. After that, this is the cylinder oil service tank and this is the individual unit of a cylinder liner and this is the quills. So this alpha lubricator when pump oil this will inject through quills into the cylinder liner. Now this lubricator is basically operated by this solenoid valve which is getting a signal from this CCU. So in a synopsis if we say the CCU will provide a signal to the this solenoid valve based on which the lubricator will activate the oil inside the cylinder liner through quills. The oil will be supplied through this cylinder oil service tank and this lubricator is mounted in a SCU block unit. Now let's see the quills or a injector NRV. So basically it's work like in this way. This is the quills which is basically mounted at a specific distance so that when injected it cover all over the cylinder liner surface to ensure that at least boundary lubrication is been formed. Now how it operates? Basically this is how if we see it closely from here you will find this view the oil will come from here it will push this ball it will push the ball and this ball will be compressed against the spring and the oil will get injected after as soon as soon the injection complete and the pressure drop by the help of this spring the ball will sit on this surface and making it a NRV non-return valve. So basically the quills are the non-return valve which is placed in a specific distance so that to make sure that the complete boundary lubrication is achieved. Now let's understand the cylinder lubricator design. Now this is the cylinder lubricator. This is a solenoid valve. This is a feedback sensor. This is the oil which is coming from the cylinder oil service tank. So the oil from a cylinder oil service tank will come and this is a sensor level sensor which will sense that whether this pot is filled with oil or not. If it is filled with oil then it will not give any alarm. Now suppose the valve which is coming from a service tank, cylinder oil service tank is closed, this pot will get empty and it will give a signal and the whole system will give a signal of no flow alarm. So basically the first safety is this that if the oil is not in this area it will raise an alarm. So the oil is coming from here after this it is coming and it is getting filled in this area. Now this solenoid valve is like a on and off type. It means when it will get signal the oil will come from here and it will have a projection and it will go and it will act on this piston. The oil is coming from here through this solenoid valve when activated the oil is acting on the actuated piston and when it is actuated at that time it will push this injection plunger inside this. Now this is the injection plunger and this is the oil which is going to the NRV. So the oil fill in this area is getting pushed by the actuator piston 
and as it is getting pushed it is increasing the pressure and the oil is injected inside the liner so what is happening the oil is coming from here 200 bar servo oil when the sur when the solenoid is activated it is pushing the actuating piston and as the piston is pressed the injection plunger which is here the oil which is collected from here during the area will be compressed against this pressure and at, it will go to the injection from inside the liner now it will return back with the help of this spring now if you want to adjust the stroke of this we can use it by this stroke adjusting screw now whether this plunger is moving properly it has been indicated by this proximity sensor so if the plunger is moving properly up and down in that case it will send a signal and if it is stuck it will send a signal that whether the movement of piston is proper or not so in simple way if you say that when the CCU will send the signal the 200 oil bar will come here it will act on the actuating piston the actuating piston will compress the oil which is filled in this area and causing the injection plunger to inject the oil to the individual quills so that the oil is getting injected inside the cylinder liner. Now the exploded view look like this. This is the solenoid valve. This is the sensor which is sending whether the feedback is proper or not. After that this is the exploded view of the thing. Now this is the actuator piston. If you compare diagram, now you can see here better. This is the actuator piston which I am talking about. This is the solenoid valve here. This is the body which look like this. And this is the adjusting screw. This is the different point. It will go to a different part of the cylinder liner quills. And this is the injection plunger. For a close view and this is spring which will help it to return back. Now when installed it look like this this is a part point going to a different part of a liner this is the inductive sensor this is solenoid valve and this is the block now if you see the injection plunger i want to show you this thing this thing okay this thing i want to show you this is the injection plunger how it look like it look like this the injection plunger look like this and it is going in this body this body the oil is getting filled in this area inside and when the oil is coming from here acting like this acting on each top it is pressing the oil which is accumulated here the oil which whatever is accumulated here that has been pressed by this injection plunger and through the point through this point through this point it is getting out to the individual injection quills so this is how the injection of cylinder lubricator take place now if you try to overall this then how to box back now first see the exploded view now you see first what you need to do is that you need to remove the top screw which is provided on top and you will take in out this top part this part spring along with this taking out this part is very easy just you need to unscrew a top part screw and you will take it out fitting back is a little bit tricky why now this injection plunger which i talk about is need to be placed inside its own slot what slot i mean to say now you see here this is a slot this is a slot you see you need to place it properly inside a proper slot this is a slot you need to properly align so what you will do you will use a special tool here that tool is compressing slowly slowly and while tightening it you have to make sure that it is properly aligned into its hole when it is properly aligned into its hole it look like this then you put back inside this cylinder housing and tighten it so the main trick of overalling a lubricator is that the overalling is very simple there is the nut on the top of this lubricator you just need to unscrew you can take the whole body out but while fitting back you have to make sure that this injection plunger is properly aligned to its hole 
and that is when done by help of this special tool and slowly slowly you need to tighten it and after tightening you need to put back now when you are doing the overhauling you need to make sure that all the o-rings are in proper conditions the spring springness should be checked the pitting mark in the piston actuating piston should be checked the inductive sensor this sensor is need to be checked properly working or not function test of this the solenoid properly working should be checked and all the holes opening should be properly checked now let's talk about how much you should do a cylinder lubrication the cylinder lubrication should be done in this area it should not it should be between this to this if it is more than the requirement it will cause scuffing if it is less than the requirement it will do high wear due to starvation causing because without any boundary lubrication it will have a high worn out of the cylinder liner but due to excessive lubrication it will cause scuffing because of the formation of calcium carbonate so excess cylinder lubrication is not good for the cylinder liner and less is also not good for the cylinder liner so you need to have a cylinder lubrication in between this zone so that need to be decided based on the manual recommendation now this is how the mop panel of the cylinder lubrication look like so whenever we are, do, we are doing the changeover it is very important to make sure the sulfur content is always changed as per the oil which has been consumed and the minimum feed rate is been fed which is as per the manual recommendation now this is as you can see the mov panel this is the 1 2 3 4 5 is the number of cylinder and this is the sulfur content which need to be fed and after sulfur content multiply with the feed factor it will give us the feed factor gram per kilowatt hour into sulfur content is giving us the feed factor means means whatever the feed rate we are feeding that is multiplied with the sulfur content giving us a feed rate factor minimum feed rate what we need to feed we need to feed it here after that how much is the running in if you want to do a running in we have to feed it here if we have to do any test we can do it by here and any lubrication adjustment we can do it by here now suppose your alpha lubricator of one unit got failed now suppose this alpha lubrication system got failed so what you will do you cannot leave a liner without any lubrication so whenever you are doing an isolation of a system in that case you have to make sure that the lubrication of the cylinder liner is continued and that is been done by the help of a plug which is called a special plug which is kept near the LV panel which is called a temporary plug which needs to be installed in a ECU plug 52 that will provide a lubrication with a random timing so in case of a isolation of a particular cylinder unit you need to provide a lubrication to the liner which need not to be properly timed it can be random time but a proper lubrication need to be there so that to prevent any type of over warner of the liner for that reason there is a temporary plug provided which is kept near the LOP panel which need to be connected to the plug 52 of a ECU so if you go to the IO test of a MOV panel you will see the 52 indicate the lubricator backup signal it will when you connect it it will give it the signal a random timing indicating that when this lubrication is to be inject inside the liner to make sure that it did not, does not starve due to the lubrication so friend I hope in this video you have learned that how the alpha lubricator works how to do the overhauling of alpha lubrication and if you have learned something from this video please do hit the like button and please do share if you are watching the video till now i know that you are very genuinely interested to know more so i recommend you to please take the membership i guarantee you will get benefit thank you friend have a good day